are recording. Well, hello, that is the Spanish presentation. Uh, sadly, I do not speak Spanish, so I'm going to revert back to my uh, English presentation. Welcome to the HBISD pre k Parent Advisory Committee meeting. I'm so glad that you're here to join us today. We look forward to uh, hearing your feedback about our pre-K program and specifically the family engagement programming within the pre-K program. We're going to look at uh, high quality pre-K in Texas. What is it and why do we have it? Uh, how does kindergarten readiness come into play? Then we'll look at family engagement specifically in pre-K, uh, the components that we have, the HUB strategies, uh, including the family engagement plan and compact. compact. Uh, we'll, as we review those, we'll look for places that need to be revised. And then at the end, we'll ask uh, everyone who's participating to take a survey. Um, and we'll also talk about upcoming events um, for this summer and this fall. So if you would, please sign in in the chat box. That way we have a record of your attendance. This is important documentation for us. Mute your mic unless you're going to uh, speak. And then out of respect for everyone, uh, I'm sorry we even have to say this, but mind your manners on camera. It's easy to turn your camera off if you need to step away. And then we want to hear what you have to say. Just keep calm and share. So if nobody has any questions, well, does anybody have any questions? Hearing none, then we'll go ahead and get started talking about high quality pre-K, which of course in HEB is a, uh, an expectation, but it is also a state requirement that we offer high quality pre-K for eligible four-year-olds in our district. A three-year-old pre-K is optional and currently we only serve three-year-old students in our special education and early childhood special education classes. So Bill and Melinda Gates have this uh, charitable foundation and they said, the first five years have so much to do with how the next 80 turn out. So uh, you've heard that expression, uh, you learn everything you need to know by the time you're four. Well, this kind of goes along with that uh, saying, uh, the first five years are so critical and uh, they have, a, they can have a high impact on the whole rest of a child's life. So we want to uh, make sure that our four-year-olds have the best experience and learn as much as they possibly can. The TEA's goal is for all Texas children to enter school with the foundational knowledge and skills to be curious, confident, and successful learners. In partnership with families, schools, and communities, TEA provides support for effective and aligned early learning opportunities, policies, and programs that support a highly skilled early learning workforce, provide resources that engage and support development of young children, and that provide an access to high quality pre-K. You know that in HEB, we uh, always shoot to be high quality. In fact, we want to be above high quality if that's even possible. But the state has given us these six components of high quality pre-K. And this is how we define whether or not we are a high quality pre-K. So uh, they expect our teachers to meet the high qualifications that are expected for pre-K teachers. And that means that they have an early childhood degrees degree and that's not just being early childhood certified. That means that they are, uh, they actually have the degree. So, uh, and there is a difference. So uh, every time we hire a teacher, we have to go through their uh, college transcripts to ensure that they have the required number of uh, hours in early childhood education. And uh, if they do not have that early childhood degree or the required number of hours in early childhood classes, 
then they have to participate in uh, our teaching and mentoring program, uh, which means that they will have uh, 75 hours of um, coaching and mentoring, and then they will also have to earn 75 hours of um, early childhood professional development. So we do our best to hire early childhood degreed teachers. Uh, however, when they're not available, we do um, offer everything they need for the coaching and mentoring program. We also have um, a 11 to 1 ratio, um, and that means 22 students and one teacher and one TA. However, we have uh, added pre-K to the District of in in Innovation grant, so now our um, ratio is well, we have 23 students and one teacher, with the exception of our blended classes. And in those classes, uh, we have five seats reserved for special education and uh, students with IEPs. And then that also gives us an additional teacher assistant in the classroom. So in our blended classrooms, we have one teacher and two teacher assistants. Then that brings us to our uh, curriculum. Uh, we follow the TEA pre-K guidelines, which have been recently revised, and so we are um, working diligently to update our curriculum to reflect the new guidelines. Um, progress monitoring is an important piece of pre-K, uh, so we use a CLI Circle progress monitoring for reading and math, as well as social emotional and um, writing, and so. Uh, this helps us measure our students' progress throughout the year, and we'll talk more about those results, uh, at least the ones we have so far for this year uh, later on. Uh, then we also have a family engagement plan. So uh, high quality pre-K requires that we have a family engagement plan as well as a pre-K learning compact, and we will be looking over those uh, later in the presentation uh, to see if we have any uh, changes or upgrades that we need to make. And then finally, at the end, we'll ask you to complete a pre-K parent survey. Um, and then we also use um, a high quality pre-K checklist to evaluate the quality of our program. So our goal is to always uh, have the highest rating on the rubric and um, we work, work hard to maintain that high quality pre-K status. Kindergarten readiness. So in HEB, we work hard to keep the main thing the main thing. And of course, getting ready for kindergarten is one of the main things. Uh, so we want our students always uh, to be able to um, dress themselves, button, zip, and snap. We want to make sure that they can handle all their own restroom needs. Uh, we want the student to be able to verbalize his or her needs and wants. Uh, in kindergarten, they will no longer take afternoon naps, and so that is something that uh, families are able to uh, practice over the summer is uh, having their children stay up all day. And then, uh, of course, we want our students to be able to eat their meal in 20 to 25 minutes because that's all the time they will have in the cafeteria. Uh, additionally, uh, pre-K prepares uh, students to learn how to take turns with their classmates and their peers. Uh, we teach them to uh, sit still and listen to a story for five minutes or more. We want them to be able to say, recognize, and write his or her first name. And we want to make sure that they recognize some letters and numbers and that the student appropriately grips the pencil or crayon and handles scissors and glue independently and appropriately. So these are just a few of the things that we try to make sure that our pre-K students know and are able to do by the end of kindergarten, because there are many, many more things that we teach in pre-K that will better prepare students to be successful in kindergarten and beyond. So uh, just know that our teachers and our teacher assistants work very hard with all of the pre-K students every single day. So remember I mentioned that we would look more at some of our assessment data for this year. 
And I'm very pleased to share this information with you because uh, it shows that our uh, program is uh, helping our students learn new skills that will be helpful in kindergarten and beyond. Uh, it also shows that our students are making progress uh, throughout the course of the year. And you can tell right now by looking at the three different columns that say BOY, MOY, and EOY. That stands for beginning, middle, and end of year. And uh, we don't have our end of year uh, testing com uh, completed yet. So we don't have our end of year data on this chart. But if you look at uh, rapid letter naming, you'll see at the beginning of the year, we had 50% of our students on track. Uh, and at the middle of the year, we had 78% of our students being on track. So that is a fantastic uh, progress. And we look for that to be even higher by the end of the year. Uh, rapid vocabulary we went from 40% on track to 56% on track. Again, very, very significant progress throughout the year. Uh, and you might ask yourself, so what happens uh, if my student is one of those in blue that still needs support? So then if your child is one of those students who still needs support, then the classroom teacher and the teacher assistant are going to take uh, they're going to use the information they receive from testing to provide that additional support during small group instruction or even one-on-one -on -one instruction. So uh, children will receive the additional support that they need on the skills that they are still uh, scoring low on. Uh, if you look at overall phonological awareness, we have 50%, 56% on track at the beginning of the year, and now we're at 71%. Um, in math, we started out the year at 79% um, on track. And then at the middle of the year, we're at 87% on track. Under social emotional, uh, this is a very interesting uh, statistic. It shows 97% at the beginning of the year and then 90% at the middle of the year. Um, that is a decline. However, it's important to note that the uh, criteria for being on track changes and, and becomes much more um, demanding or strict. And so the, uh, the percentage did drop a little bit there. However, we do hope that at end of year, um, we are able to regain uh, that higher percentage. And then for early writing skills, you'll see that we improved from 82% to 86%. So uh, something for you to keep in mind is that um, with CLI, this is not like a traditional kind of report card grade where you would say um, that a student has an A or a B or a C. So when we look at CLI data, we have to keep in mind that it figures in the age of your child uh, as well as uh, where they need to be on the rubric for the skill that they're being tested on. So these percentages uh, are not, they are set on a move, they are, they reflect a moving target. So uh, for each administration, the target changes a little bit as well as the child's age. So um, no matter how you look at this data, you see that we have uh, increased our students are making great progress, and we hope to see that pattern continue at our end of year uh, data analysis. Any questions about the data? So pre K in family engagement in pre K is one of those six components that we saw uh, back on the requirements for a highly quality, high quality pre K program. Uh, the family is defined as adults and children significant in the child's life who support early learning and child development. So we want to make sure that uh, this definition is all inclusive. So it doesn't specifically say parents, because sometimes you have uh, children who are, who are being raised by grandparents or 
aunts and uncles. They might be in foster homes. Um, there are a variety of different adults taking responsibility for raising children within the family. And so we just want to make sure that that definition is all inclusive. So we have six components in um, family engagement that are essential for high quality pre-K. Uh, we need to facilitate family to family support, establish a network of community resources, increase family participation and decision making. And that's what we're doing here today. Uh, as we go through this program, uh, you will have an opportunity to look at our family engagement policy and plan, as well as our uh, pre-K compact. And then you will be able to help us uh, make changes to those as you see fit. Um, and keep in mind that we listen to what everybody says. And then after we've had all of our our PAC meetings, we put that information together and, and we determine um, what changes that we need to make. But we have to look at all of the data that we um, receive from parents. And then um, we work hard to equip families with tools to enhance and extend student learning um, and student achievement. And we provide ongoing professional development for our teachers uh, so that they know how to support families in meeting their child's learning benchmarks. And of course, we evaluate our family engagement efforts and we use that those results to continually improve. So these are the first two pages of our um, family engagement policy and plan for pre-K specifically. There's another family engagement policy that is for the whole district, but that encompasses uh, grades uh, pre-K through six. It is a general uh, policy and plan. It is not uh, specific to pre-K. So high quality pre-K uh, requires us to have a specific pre-K policy and plan. Uh, and it can be built into the district one, but then that makes it, um, it doesn't stand out as much as we really want it to for pre-K. So um, when you look at page one, what you see is a, um, a definition of what TEA sees as the purpose of family engagement in the um, pre-K program uh, would look like, as well as uh, the definition of family um, when you refer to family engagement. And then, so on the next page, in the first column, you see that um, we have the six components listed and numbered. And then in the column on the right, we have uh, the pre-K department family engagement plan. And where we have an opportunity to put links for things that we do, um, such as the district parent academy, uh, the application for free and reduced lunches, um, there's information about HEB reads, and then uh, free summer dining program, community resources. Uh, all of these are family to family support opportunities. And notice that number two says school-wide, in-person, or virtual hands-on family engagement activities. And then um, pre-K specific in-person or virtual, <clears throat> that's a repeat. So that's something that we need to uh, fix. And I'm just making a note of that right now. Oh, I see the difference between the two. Um, so number two is school-wide and number three is pre-K specific. So for example, you might have um, a pre-K through sixth grade math night or your pre-K uh, teacher or teacher team might actually host a math night just for pre-K families. So that's the difference between those two. It, it seems repetitive unless you really um, pay attention to the beginning. Uh, so then if you look at number two, well, before we go any further, does anybody see any um, issues with number one? And I can't see you guys. So if uh, 
somebody could unmute and respond, that would be great. I don't think there is any comments. Okay. Um, also, be sure that, uh, or please know that you can put your comments in the uh, chat box. And so if you see any um, comments pop up in the chat box, then would y'all please let me know. Uh, number two is establish a network of community resources. Excuse, so, me, excuse yes. me, Ms. Kelly, can you make a little bigger to, you know, uh, attendance to see better? A little bigger because it's very small, the letters. Let's see. Can you still see my um, screen? No, I think so. Now it's better. Does that help? Yeah, it helps a lot. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at number two, establish a network of community resources. And you can see here are uh, many resources beginning with the PTA closed closet that we have available to families. Um, and there, these are all live links that will take families out to uh, those websites. It's important to note that this one that is not linked. It says partnering to empower young children, a partnership be between HEBISD and local preschools and child care centers. So uh, this is a an annual event where we provide training for uh, local uh, preschools and daycares because we know that the students that they are serving uh, currently will eventually end up in our uh, classrooms. And so the more we help them, then the more they can help us. Let's move on to number three, increase family participation in decision-making. Pre-K classes, pre-K families will be invited to participate and serve on uh, parent-teacher conferences, uh, ISTs. Um, those are instructional student team meetings, ARD committee meetings, which uh, is admission review and dismissal from special education. Uh, so then there are a variety of parent advisory committee meetings, including the one that we're having today. Uh, the DPAC uh, is the district parent advisory committee. The CPAC is the campus parent advisory committee meeting and the PK PAC is uh, ours that we're having today. Uh, we also have uh, language assessment proficiency uh, committees. Those are LPACs. So families are uh, included in making decisions about their child's education on a regular basis in HEB. And uh, that is something that we are very proud of and we hope to con uh, continue. Then our district customer satisfaction survey. Uh, we've already completed the one for this year. It usually is uh, available sometime in the middle of the year so that we can use that information to help us plan for the coming years. We also have a pre-K program survey, which we'll look at here at the end of this meeting. And then our family engagement feedback collected after family engagement workshops and events. So as teachers are providing these workshops for families, then uh, they are often taking what we call plus deltas or they're checking for things that they could do better. Everybody has their own way of doing that. Uh, but, uh, and then today we will be uh, asking you for feedback on the pre-kindergarten plan and compact for family engagement. Number four is equip families with tools to enhance and extend learning to increase student achievement. So of course we had we offer pre-K kickoff, we have back to school meetings, uh, we have technology and apps that use email, uh, Remind, Facebook, Twitter, Seesaw, ABC Mouse, Talking Points, Swarm Newsletters. All of these are way, things that we use to communicate and to uh, provide additional support for families as they help their children at home. Then we also have district campus and classroom family literacy and math workshops, fall parent teacher conferences, uh, spring celebration of learning, which we are changing this year to pre K celebrates learning. So we will need to make that update. Joey, would you make a note about that? 
and then um, summer learning activities such as HEB reads and ELP summer school programs are available. Uh, the classrooms have lending libraries, we have kindergarten kickoff and registration, which is now uh, available online. Uh, we teach families about uh, conscious discipline. We also have the District Parent Academy that includes um, some classes that would be helpful for our pre-K families. And then we have bilingual family engagement classes at Shady Oaks, Bel Air, and Oakwood Terrace. And then every campus has a PTA. And uh, finally, we do offer adult ESL classes for adult family members who don't speak English, but wish to um, wish to learn. And, and that's important here because uh, when families, when non-English speaking families learn to speak English, then they will be better able to communicate with uh, their child's teachers and campus administrators. And so we include that as part of um, equipping families with tools to enhance their child's education. Number five is provide ongoing professional development. So uh, we do that with our teachers every year. This year we had uh, district PD days as well as uh, pre-K curriculum previews, which um, are available online in the curriculum itself, and then department instructional planning meetings. And then finally, we have uh, campus professional development work days where uh, campus administrators who are the instructional leaders on their campus will actually offer additional professional development. So our teachers are very well trained and, um, and quite accomplished. And then finally, number six is evaluate the family engagement efforts and use the results for continuous improvement. And so that's what we do. We use our survey results to provide valuable information in planning, developing, and implementing pre-K activities for the district. And we will also use your comments to revise, review, revise and review our district pre-K learning compact and high quality family engagement plan annually. So I am going to go. Um, so at this time, I'd like to open it up to the floor um, to see what um, recommendations you might have for making things more user friendly or easier to understand. So I'm going to go back to our meeting and I'm going to stop sharing. That was a lot of information about high quality pre-K and the family engagement policy and um, a very uh, fly by view review of the policy and the plan. So what I would like to know is if anybody sees anything that needs uh, correcting or uh, improving for next year. I'd like just to suggest a digital thing, which is to add a link to the to these documents, because when parents look at it, you know, maybe it's small for them. So if, if we can share from the drive the documents, we just put a link for it oh, in the PowerPoint yes. mm -hmm. presentation. Yes, yes, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And then I saw um, in the chat box, Beth asked a question. Websites like ABC Mouse, uh, are they available for families to use? Joey, correct me if I'm wrong, but the answer is yes, families can use ABC Mouse at home. Would you like to talk a little more about that? That is correct. They will have access once the child is enrolled and school has started to ABC Mouse. Um, however, the district devices stay at school while they're enrolled in pre-K. So the parents, um, we'd have, we're still working with technology to see how the parents will be able to access that for next year. Um, but yes, to answer your question, they will have home access to ABC Mouse. Great. Does that answer your question, Beth? Perfect. Okay, so um, one of the things that we will have to do uh, is go back through the uh, pre-K policy and plan to update all of the dates and um, 
make sure all of the links are still live and uh, all of those things, but we will definitely do that. Um, does anyone else see any content or anything that needs to be, um, that you think we could improve on for next year? I think this is a great effort. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. So the next thing that we need to do is look at our, um, now, can you see my PowerPoint again? Not yet. Not yet. Let me go back and reshare. Okay. Now you can see my PowerPoint again? Yes. yes. Thank you. So now let's go to the learning compact. So one of the things that uh, I have learned from Dr. Constantino is that um, he says, you know, if we knew the perfect ways to educate all children all by ourselves, we certainly would have done it by now, right? And so uh, I think that is just uh, a very transparent way of saying to our families that we all need to work together to help our children learn and grow and be the best that they can be. So um, in this compact, we congratulate our families for deciding to put their children in pre-K because pre-K is not a required program. Children can certainly start school in kindergarten or even first grade uh, without having attended pre-K or kindergarten. Uh, so it is a big step for parents to put their children in our pre-K program, and we really appreciate you choosing our program to um, begin your child's academic life. And uh, we also know that parents are a child's first teacher, uh, and that your home is their child's first school. And so um, we welcome this partnership and um, we think that going forward, it is a little easier for everybody to do their part if we all know what our part is. And so that's the purpose of the compact is to say, the parents and families will do these things, the child will do these things, and the school will do these things. And of course, for the children, um, you know, everything that we say we want them to be able to do, uh, we keep those uh, things developmentally appropriate because, you know, we're not going to say that the child is going to read for two hours every night because that's not developmentally appropriate, right? So let's start out by looking at the uh, parent and family uh, box. We say um, we would expect parents and families to commit to my child attending school regularly and on time. So it's a very, very important that families know that attendance matters in pre-K as well as in every other grade level. Uh, once your child is enrolled in school, it is uh, then your child and your family itself become um, not liable, but um, you are required to follow all of the attendance policies set forth by HEBISD as well as the state of Texas. Uh, we do ask that you check your child's folder every day for important communication from the teacher or um, for graded papers or anything like that. Uh, and also uh, keep an eye on Seesaw, which is our virtual platform. And then we ask that parents attend pre-K activities and meetings. And we ask you to keep all of your contact information current with um, the school so that in case of emergency, uh, you can be reached uh, quickly. Then we ask children to take ownership of their own learning, be kind with their words, participate in classroom activities, and have fun learning because pre-K uh, is intended to be a lot of fun and we, uh, we look forward to them uh, having that fun because if they have fun while they're learning, they don't even realize they're learning anything, right? Um, 
And of course we do know that all children are different. And so sometimes they may, some children may start out participating fully in the classroom activities and other children are more shy. And so we try to um, meet the needs of all of our students and encourage them, uh, our shy students to participate uh, more fully as the, as the year progresses. And then uh, we also encourage our uh, really uh, enthusiastic students and, and highly participative students in the, at the beginning of the year, we encourage them to leave room for the other children to participate. So uh, it is a, a fine line, but certainly we do try to meet all of the needs of the children in our classroom. And then as a school, we promise to provide high quality instruction uh, to communicate with your family and to assist your family with skills to help your child at home and to provide a safe learning environment for your child. So uh, you can see that uh, these, these things that are listed here are all things that if everybody does their part, then uh, the end result is going to be a uh, happy year in pre-K, as well as uh, a lot of learning in the pre-K year. So at this time, I would also like to ask uh, if you see any changes that need to be made uh, in the compact. We've used this compact for quite a few years now, and I think that um, over time we have tweaked it some, but uh, it has worked pretty well in the history of uh, pre-K in HEB. I think everything was covered. You think so? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like the simplicity of the compact. I think that it's uh, appropriate for four-year-olds four and families of four-year-olds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Since yes, ma'am? Yes. Who was that? No, no. It oh. was me. Oh, okay. Um, so that being said, um, let's go back to the PowerPoint real quick. Uh, that brings us to the end of our meeting. And so we would ask the families of our four-year-old kiddos or our future four-year-old kiddos to use this link to fill out the form. And I'm going to copy the link and put it in the chat box. So if you would please use this link to um, complete the survey, then that would help us uh, greatly with our um, program evaluation. As always, I would just like to say uh, thank you for your participation today. And I would like to um, invite you to reach out and ask questions and, um, and be an engaged family uh, this year uh, we appreciate all the engagement that you have uh, shown this year if your child is in pre-K this year. And, and we look forward to engaging with you if your child's going to be in pre-K next year. We also uh, just want you to know that the pre-K department is here for you. Uh, Ms. Joey Martinek will be the pre-K coordinator next year. And we're very uh, proud of her accomplishment here. And I'm uh, confident that I'm handing this department over to the right person. So um, once you have completed the link, um, the survey, then you're free to go. I do see we have another question. Are there any resources that we should use over the summer to get a head start on learning? Oh, that's a great question. 
Uh, besides ABC Mouse, Joey, do you have anything that you would recommend? Uh, I would say, obviously, uh, go to HEB Reads and get your free books and uh, stop by the pre-K table and we're going to share some activities uh, that you can do at home over the summer as well as provide an additional free book. Uh, but Joy, what do you think? I would also suggest the books that we handed out, the pamphlets for the parents at pre-K kickoff. And if you weren't able to attend pre-K kickoff, the campuses should have some extras maybe in their office that you can pick up. But that pamphlet is aligned to our new pre-K guidelines, and it has different areas that you can work with your child and all the different developmental, um, like as far as social emotional, reading, early literacy, early math, and then just some fun things that you can do with your child over the summer. So I'll definitely make sure that you have that pamphlet. And if not, reach out to our department. We have some extras on hand. Also, that pamphlet will uh, go home with parents at the end of the celebration or pre-K celebrates learning. Uh, but if your kiddo is going to be in pre-K next year, then you won't be at uh, pre-K celebrates learning this year. That's a, a good idea for us to have here at the family center when we are testing those kiddos. So to That's have a wonderful maybe, idea, Glenda. Uh, and we have some extra copies that we can certainly put over there. I also invite I'm inviting all the parents to visit our public libraries over the summer. Mm -hmm. That's another thing That's that I'm doing. Idea. They have lots of story times and and uh, reading clubs, and of course, HEB Reads has is a whole summer reading program, so that's a great uh, option as well. But they do a good job too because we partner with the city libraries. Uh, they do a good job, too, of uh, sharing information about what's going on this summer at the city libraries. Well, thank you all for um, joining me today. And I'm going to um, say that if there aren't any other questions, that we are all done and uh, we're able to adjourn. So thank you very much. Have a great rest thank of you. your day and a wonderful Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.